Welcome to another episode of The Lockdown, hosted by myself, Adam Cuthbertson, and brought to you by L Natural Skin Care, something that Trent Merrin is very fond of and has used in the past. You can find all products at www.lnaturals.uk. Today, I am very happy to welcome a very special guest and a good friend of mine who has racked up over 200 NRL games and has included representative honours for both his state and country. Uh, joining with us all the way from Shell Harbour, New South Wales, is Mr. Trent Merrin. Hey! hey. <laughs> What's happening, mate? I miss you. Oh, mate. It's... um. Crazy times. Definitely is. Definitely is. Pandemic. I know. It's been a bit eerie, mate. A bit eerie over here too. Speaking of which, what is it like over there? Silent and quiet. It's like a zombie land, mate. I'm telling you. It's it's very eerie. A bit of peace and quiet. It's not so bad every now and then. But when it's in this, in this sort of scenario, it's like, it's a bit crazy, isn't it? Yeah, mate. It's it's weird over here too. The the government aren't too sure on what they want to do yet. They've put a few laws in place, but we haven't gone into total lockdown. So we're about we're able to leave the house and go for brisk walks or do a bit of exercise. But yeah, we're not in total lockdown. So fingers crossed it doesn't get to that extent. So the government haven't officially said lockdown crisis. You got to stay in. You got some rules that you got to abide by, like here in the UK. I'm not sure if you know, but we got we got rules now we can be jailed if we don't abide by them and this includes yeah, we've got we've got, fines. Going for a walk we've got with fines dog. That. yeah it's a bit crazy i don't think we're at that extent yet i think we, yeah. we'll probably get there but um it's a bit, it's weird mate like i watch the updates every day and they have new rules new um new fines in place i think um you're only allowed to walk with your partner or one friend um but that'd be that'd be yeah. easy for you. It'd be very easy for me, mate. I, mean, I like me alone time, so it's um, mate. It's probably come at the best time, actually. Um, I know that the world uh, we're in a bit of a, a depression at the moment, but um, it's been good having the being able to have the little man. I don't think I would have been able to have so much time with him if um we weren't isolated at home. So I've been able to help out a lot at home. Yeah, new to the uh, <clears throat> new to becoming a father. You've just had your your, your first child with Jess. Um, Little baby boy by the name of Maine. How's that been going? It's been uh, it's been challenging, mate. It's been very challenging. It was the best day of my life, and it and it's um it's something that I'll, I'll definitely cherish forever. Um, but yeah, he's he's definitely been challenging. He's keeping us up all night, but he's getting into his own little routine. It's like I, like I touched on just then. It's it's been good to be able to be home with him and yeah. share the feeding times and help putting him to bed, especially with Jess. She's recovering from it, so. Um, yeah, it's been great, mate. It's been excellent. It's um, something I've uh, I've uh, definitely wanted to to have for a long time. Yeah, I remember you talking about it quite a bit last year. Um, how excited you were to become a father and that. And I uh, I think um, it's been a, a long time overdue for you. You've uh, you seem to have wanted to take up this role a long, long time ago, haven't you? I have, mate. I'm a big kid myself, so yeah, to be able to be able to have a little boy, um, yeah, come into my life now. It's it's definitely um yeah it's 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 put me in a good position now I'm, re- I'm ready to to take on that role has it been scary uh as a new dad with everything going on like i mean it, it must be exciting and almost a blessing that you get to spend all this time at home suddenly with um with your little boy uh and your in your in your family um but uh due to the circumstance it must be quite must be quite scary mate it is mate it's it's very eerie i think um all, all, all I can relate is from me growing up as a kid and coming into the world the way I know it, and um, it's a bit different when when you when you have your own child and you start to look at the world in a different manner and you start to pay attention to governments and um, the way the world's run and what sort of world that you're going to bring this child up into. So um, it is very eerie. It's it's um, very scary, but um, I think the best way you can possibly take it is to be positive in such a downtime do your homework um uh look at different avenues to to work around the the troubling times that we're having and try and put some positive things in place i suppose it's just about adapting isn't it really big time mate big time i think you gotta have an open mind in these these times i think um, we're all going to be challenged in, in different ways especially financially 
Yeah. But um, if you can open your mind and um, do your own research, do your own diligence and, and take and notice on what is actually happening and not just listening to mainstream media and um, yeah, going about things in your own manner, I think uh, it de- it'll definitely help the little man coming through. But um, yeah, it is definitely going to be a challenging era for him. I mean, you're not you're not at this, this stage yet, but my boy's just going on 20 month uh, this month, and he's up and running. He's just ripping the house apart, basically. With um, I've seen him uh, touching you up in the fitness on the hills, mate, the other day. So. <laughs> yeah, he's been challenging me a bit. And that was, I mean, that was earlier. Um, that was just before the lockdown, I think, or day one, maybe. Um, but things have sort of ramped up since, you know, with the government saying, you know, they don't ever want people doing like runs down the park anymore, especially ones that are like quite popular and that. So lately we've been um, <clears throat> trying to find new things to do, things to learn. Mate, it's difficult. It is and it isn't because they're so, they absorb so much. Um, but just being confined to the house and like a small sort of yard and um, as you can imagine, the weather's sort of turned. We had some good weather at the beginning of the week, but here in England, uh, you, 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 every day is different. So um, <clears throat> the weather's sort of turned. I suppose for yourself, it's probably a little bit easier um, with that sort of open plan living that uh, all Australians tend to live with. Yeah, it's 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 been a blessing, to be honest, um, the way that things have unfolded. We're, we're at home, we've got family around. Not that we can... Uh, we hasn't met any of our family yet with due to Oh, really? No way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, we weren't allowed anyone in the hospital when he was oh. due. Um, Mum seen him from a distance for the first time yesterday. So he, we call him our little corona baby. He's, uh, <laughs> he's, uh, he's in isolation. You'll have hair on his face by the time he meets anyone. So. <laughs> How tough is that? Um, not being able yeah, to, it's been, like, your first uh, child and your parents not being able yeah. to come visit. And... Yeah, well, like I said before, mate, I think um, there's different ways you can look at what we're going through you can look at the negatives which he hasn't been able to meet any family but i think in this time you really need to um pull the, the positives out of everything which we've tried to do and the best thing about it is that um we've got to spend those precious hours when he was first born to ourselves and uh, really take it in instead of passing them around to everyone and yeah um putting him at risk at any disease not just coronavirus just yeah. anything so to have um those special hours just with him at, at birth and then even now it's great just to have him by ourselves to fit into a routine yeah. take him for a little brisk walk um not having to be bombarded with too many people it's we've found the positive in it but yeah mate like you said it's it's been a blessing to to be able to be back home um in our own environment and um bring him back um yeah bring him up where i grew up I suppose we're we're quite fortunate to have the technology we have these days. So you can almost, well, I know for myself, I having my first child here in Leeds and and my, all my family living in Australia, it was really uh, was sort of the same thing without you know all the precautions going on um, and you know an epidemic or anything. But couldn't couldn't introduce the young fella to majority of my family until he was after one because that's just sort of pe- people don't realize this when you're working abroad it's not as easy as jumping on a plane just taking the young fellow home to meet the family is it um i had to wait no. until i had to wait till he was about one till they till they all met i mean my sister didn't meet him until just just so he's about one and a half and um yeah good a good majority of my family but we are really quite fortunate to have technology where you can facetime and that so i suppose that probably helps in a sense it helps a lot. I think um, I think you'll find now, um, again, trying to find a positive in, in such a um, terrible situation, but I think you'll find a lot of people really, like we said earlier, just opening their minds with technology and probably might even step away from the business that they've always been into because they found new um, yeah, new, new things to get involved in with, with social media and um, what we're available to, to access uh, and what... Yeah. Um, Took a few things off for him and taking a new avenue. So, mate, it, it is great to have um the, the things that we do have in technology at the moment. Talk us through the name Maine. How'd you come up with that? Yeah, mate. It's um every couple has this argument and debate before they name a child. I'm not mate, gonna, it, not going to took us forever. It took us forever to be honest. Yeah. I think well, I'm an hour, and even even when he was born, um, we're in there and the the midwife come in and they're like, hey, so what's his name? And we're like. We both looked at each other and we're like, oh, we don't know yet. We haven't, we haven't, dec- we haven't fully decided. So, um, yeah, it's between two. Um, I was always 
keen on Maine. I think um, it, it was weird how it come up. I just we we're watching. <laughs> we're actually you're probably like this. We're, we're actually watching the Lion King, the the new one out, and um, we always wanted a, uh, the boy's name starting with M. I mean, yeah. just just to match our last name, and um, yeah, I was just we're watching it, and I just seen. Um, I seen Mufasa come on the screen and his big, uh, big lines mane, and I thought, geez, that's a strong, strong uh, looking mane, and it, it just felt real strong. So yeah. I just said, I, I, after the movie, I, I said to Jess, "What do you think of the name Mane?" And she's like, "I actually really like that." And I went, "Okay, well, let's just we we'll just sit on it." Um, or saying like, oh, "I love it. he is the main person in our life at the moment too." So. Well, he will be not just at the moment. He, he's yeah. definitely the main, the main human in our life. So I think there's some strong points to it, and I think that, I don't know it just grew on us and grew on us. And um, yeah, after the midwife asked us, I think we uh, when she left, we we said, all right, well, what is it? And we locked it in, mate, and just went with it. And I'm I'm so happy that we did because you know I love it. It suits him so much, and he's our main little man. Nice. I suppose we've both been influenced then by The Lion King as my oh, No, that's what I thought you'd like, that, mate. Kion, which is, um, he's, I'll explain it now because a lot of people don't get it yet. Kion is Simba's son. So there's like a series of kids' programs called Kion the Lion Guard. And I named, we named um, our boy after Kion. But I hope it, I hope. I hope people understand the name Maine better than they understand the name Kion. Because I, I, <coughs> we can walk in anywhere and they say, oh, what's your little boy's name? Kion, they're like, oh, Keegan. You're like, no, no, Kion. Yeah. They're like, oh, Keon. You're like, no. Say <laughs> Kion, and then add a K. And they're like, oh, Mark. And you're like, what? <laughs> but people, people just refuse to uh it's a lot better it. than being announced on national television that was a little girl so um <laughs> that's a bit better is that what is that what the, the, the yeah the, i'm gonna the, i'm gonna play it for him at his 18th they announced it in the first nrl game back uh congratulations to trent Marin and, and jess that they um had their uh, first child a little girl named Maine. so i'll definitely yeah, replay yeah. that one back for him at his 18th yeah, have you had some? Have you had some? Besides that, of course, have you had any interesting um, stories? I know you, you lose your sanity a bit when you're going through um, when you're going through the first couple of months of bringing a child into the world. You sort of um, lose a lot of sleep, and you're new to nappies and feeding times and that. Have you got any good stories? Um, mate, there's there's been a few things happening in a short amount of time. I mean, he's, he's been <laughs> in this world for two weeks, and he's really he's he's chucking up some. Uh, some things on the list to, yeah, to remind him about. I think, um, well, the other day, I, I think you've seen, I put it up on my socials, he absolutely power spewed everywhere all over me. I, mean, <laughs> it was, I, was, I was feeding him in my arms and he, he had a little bit of a cough, so I sat him up and as I sat him up, he just went <laughs> everywhere in my face. So he got me a beauty there and um, I changed his nappy the other day and oh, he hates he hates uh, his private parts getting wet wipe with the as we as we wipes. all do as we all do. as we all do so as i've wiped him he's just squirted absolutely in my face everywhere all over him all over himself gave himself a golden shower so he um he's been on fire lately mate i can't wait to see what else he produces just stitching you up left front center oh we're gonna be no, stuck he's... inside this whole time we're gonna make it interesting <laughs> oh mate he's testing us don't worry <laughs> jess is about to tap out <laughs> how funny is it um how funny is it that like you see other people and their kids and you think, oh, I couldn't deal with that. But then suddenly it's your own child and it's actually like, I'm not saying being peed in the face is good, but uh, if you had to be peed in the face by anyone, you can hey, sort of like, because you look at his little his little face and he's like, oh, bless him. He didn't, he doesn't mean to. You just that. accept it. Yeah, you yeah, just yeah, accept yeah. it and you find the cute side in it all. It's, yeah, it is weird. It's very weird, mate. But, uh, you can let it, a human being just piss on your face and you sweat <laughs> i used to be very I've, well sorry i've still got a very sensitive nose so you know the smell oh, i suppose um a few lads can probably agree with me on this that i don't like people farting all the time around me or poo smells or whatever but so i was really um i was really unsure of how i was going to go as a father especially changing nappies and that but it's for some reason you just adapt quickly, don't you? It's like you don't even you, you do, mate. You don't even you can't prepare yourself for it to be honest. Like when he um 
you, you think you're ready and that, and then when they come into the world, mate, there's no instruction manual. It's just do your best. Uh, um, yeah, it's very testing, but yeah, like I said, if, um, it's probably the only person I'll let piss in my face, so it's, it's good. <laughs> How's Jess going with it all? She taken to motherhood well? Uh, she's great, mate. She was made for it. Um, yeah. When I get frustrated, she just comes in and just takes over, and he's a mama's boy already. She just settles him, and yeah. Um, she, she had everything all set up before he come into it, and yeah, she just she just knows exactly what to do. It's it's weird, just a mother's intuition. She's yeah. She's on the ball, but uh, like I said, he's he's testing us both at the moment. So, um, I just fed him and, and put him down, so she can have a, a nice relaxing shower and put a movie on and relax a little bit get some r and r and then um i'll take over again but yeah mate she's been she's been outstanding and credit to her too in her delivery she was a wonder woman mate she was outstanding it's um yeah you, you just have so much respect for them and when they're going through hell what they they always they do in there it's um yeah there's nothing special than watching them uh, come through the other end <laughs> nicely put nicely put there you go mate yeah <laughs> There was a, Made for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, it's funny. I think it's funny because, like, um, mothers seem to take to it so quickly. Uh, and I think, like, if I speak on behalf of myself, you just become such an awkward dad, like, because we're so big. I feel like we've, like, and you've got something so precious, like, you've got their neck and everything to worry about. Like, oh, it scares the, It used to scare the crap out of me when Kyle was first born about the way I held him and that. It was just, like, the most tense. So precious. Yeah, you just like it's it's really weird. It's really weird. How's um how's it been since being back home? Obviously, spent a year with us here in Leeds last year, um, and ended up finding your way back home at the end of the year. How's it been since you've been home, and why has it been really important to you um, to get home? Yeah, mate. Like um, I think it all happened so quick when I was when I was over there in Leeds. Um, it would have been great to stay there, mate. Like I absolutely love my time at the club and and with all you boys and. I felt something brewing that was going to be excellent there, which is taken on now and used to doing absolutely outstanding. Um, but yeah, we, we had our own circumstances that we needed to get back here with. Um, just as mum passed away th- throughout last year, which is um, yeah absolutely uh, shattering for us. So, um, And then we found out that we're, we're pregnant with Middle Maine. And um, I think in life you... Um, People make sacrifices for yourself, which just did for me. I think she she packed up and, and moved over to England for us to yeah. to pursue that that dream there. And um, I think uh, when everything went the way it did, I just had to take a look at, from outside in. And she just took so many hits for me, um, and I just couldn't let it happen anymore. And I think the best option was to to get us back home and and for our mental health and um, especially bringing a child into the world. I think. Um, I owed it to, to my family to to start them off in a good position. So um, when the opportunity arised to to come back, we jumped at it. And um, yeah, thankfully enough, it um, it all happened swiftly. And um, we got here and set up base back home and um, took on the challenge to get back into the NRO at the Dragons. And um, it was a challenge, mate. It was definitely hard to, to get back into a pre-season, um, especially been away from it th- for three weeks. Uh, I think they started three weeks by the time I got there. So they were three weeks ahead, um, looking fit and lean and, and uh, yeah, ready to go. And I rock up and I was a bit overweight, a bit, <laughs> beho- bit behind. And, um, a bit on holidays. I have uh, been on holidays. <laughs> <laughs> the Yorkshire pudding got to me. So <laughs> I, um, I definitely had to play catch up. So that was a test in itself as well as um, trying to set everything up back home and, and get Jess and the bub um, in a good place. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a challenging few weeks in the pre-season. And then uh, it all, the season started to come around, started to find my feet again, started to get back into shape and getting my head right and um, getting in the right position to take on a, a big season and then um, get two rounds in and an old Boris takes over. So <laughs> put everything on pause. But, um, mate, yeah, mate, it's going it to retire me. Oh, I hope it retires me. I hope it puts the, the boots up for me. Yeah. It's been a big year. It's been a big year, but yeah, mate, I, um, I've learned a lot from it. Uh, and hopefully we can keep uh, moving forward with it all. Did you take some, uh, I mean, you were the captain of our club the entire of 2009. Did you take some fond memories away from me? I know 
you left quite respectfully, to be fair. Like everyone, everyone had um, the utmost respect for you um, because of the way you conducted yourself when you're at the club. And obviously, obviously, you didn't re, um, leave out of, out of greed or anything like that. You you made a decision for your family um, going forward. Um, so, did you um, did you take anything from your time at Leeds um, whilst you're here? Most definitely, mate. It's, it's probably been the biggest learning chapter of my whole life. Think, um, mate, the, the the people there that they just respect and love Leeds, well, and the Super League. Just it was great to be a part of the Super League, but just Leeds in itself. Speaking from um, a Leeds player, um, just taking us in as a Australian family. Um, no one really had to do that for us, and. Um, as soon as we touched down, um, everyone opened us, opened their arms up to us like a family and um, treat us like their own. And I think that's that's one of the, the special things I, I took out of it is that um, that you just go into an unknown area and they just welcome you with, with open arms and they put you first and um, whatever we needed, they, they made sure that we're, we're happy. And um, that was one of the, the main things there that really stood out to me is how humble everyone was in, in Leeds itself. But... Um, mate, the, the playing group was outstanding. I had a great time there. Um, obviously, getting used to new banter. I don't think uh, the Australian banter is the exact same as the English banter. <laughs> but um, as soon as I, I weaseled into that that little group and uh, worked my way through it all, um, yeah, mate, it was it was such a good time. I, I know that we didn't have the best season um, last year, but um, the just the the way that everyone carried themselves through the tough times. And um, you can you can see the rewards that you're having now with um, with what we all went through. But um, I absolutely love my time there, man. Like I, I, I keep saying, we we did move for family reasons. But if that wasn't the case, I definitely would have seen out my four years at the place to yeah. to be a, a, able to be named captain as well. Such a prestigious club was is definitely one of the high, highlights of my whole career. I think um, I didn't really understand the heritage behind Leeds Rhinos by the time before I even got to the club. I think. My transition to the Super League was so quick. I didn't really get to do me, me the diligence of looking, at, doing my homework on the place. And um, as soon as I got there and we played a few games and I realised how prestigious Leeds Rhinos is. Um, and then to be named captain on top of that, uh, it was just, a, it was definitely a highlight of my career and something I, was, I will definitely cherish forever. And the friendships that I made, and, um, yeah, it's it's definitely something that I'll, I'll never forget. And, Hopefully, who knows if uh, the time arises, if coronavirus sends me back over there to, to finish my <laughs> career, I'll definitely take it with, with both hands, mate. That's brilliant. I can I can officially um, announce that your head's been um, removed from the bus, the team bus. <laughs> oh, it's gone now. There's someone put whose head's over right now. As you remember, last year, a few people um, left the club um, Throughout the season, season. It, was, it was like everyone on the bus, everyone that they that they printed along the side of the bus were the ones that kept got kept moved on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I think the club to save a bit of coin just went and stuck new heads on top of the bodies. <laughs> you want to stay away from that sponsorship, the bus sponsorship. You want to stay away from that one. <laughs> it's a tough, it's a tough nut to crack that one. Oh, geez, yeah, mate. No, it was um, it was it was definitely a good time, but um, yeah, I, I'm very. Pleased and, and grateful to be, to be able to be home, especially now with what we're going through. What's um so being part of the Dragons now? Um, what's it mean to be back at a club where it all started at? Because I mean, I I played with you there um, mm-hmm. early in early in your years when you were a young fella coming through the ranks still, and you were lucky to pick up a, um, a premiership back then. Um, yeah. But you've you've almost gone on this huge journey and loop back around to be back at the club where it all started again. What's it like to be actually back home, and what's that mean to you? Yeah, the circle of life, mate. It's um, it's it's uh, it gave me goosebumps to be honest when I when I found out that they were interested to get me back there. I think yeah. um, I definitely always wanted to to retire there. I think um, I'm so passionate about the place. I think as a as a 15, 16 year old growing up in in the south coast in Shohawa. I think the Red V is the only club that you aspire to play for, and you you work hard so much as a kid. You play SG ball, you 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 train so hard as a kid just to put that Steelers jersey on with the junior reps team, and then when you're there, you you watch that the Dragons boys walk in the in the facility, and that's where you want to be as a kid. And um, when I did get the crack to play for him and play alongside you, um, that passion just grew and grew, and 
Um, I think to, I'm, when I first moved to Pembroke, I needed to for, for my own development. Um, and when I left it, I don't know, it, it wasn't this exact same feeling as it was with the Dragons. And when I went to Leeds, I, they're all great clubs and they all um, played a role in my life and my career, but um, nothing really felt the same as the Red V did for me. It, it's just uh, ingrained in me through, through junior roots and, and things that I had to work really hard for. And to, to be able to come back to that circle of life and um, to wear that red V again, mate, it, was, it is something special and something I hold very, very close to my heart. And um, I definitely want to finish my career there. We've sort of both gone on journeys, I suppose. Would you agree with me that it's sort of tough um, walking away from a club that you've almost been a supporter of um, to find um, the passion and understand the culture when you leave a club such as the Red V for Panthers and then coming over to um, coming over here to Leeds, you almost got to, like you said, do your homework and understand the club a bit better before you can really be passionate about it. I found it a bit difficult leaving Manly um, <clears throat> and playing for another club. Do you think part of those reasons are because of understanding the culture and the history and because you may have may not been a fan prior to making that sign? Yeah, most definitely. Man. I think um, you you definitely in your comfort zone when you're, especially the first club that you, you groom through and you, you, you grow up with. I think um, you, you're definitely in your comfort zone. Everything's familiar. You, the banter's there. You've, you've had the same banter throughout your junior career and into the first grade. And, the familiar faces, you know, even driving the train and it's, it's second nature, you just yeah. zone off and you, you get straight there. So the, the outside noises don't really play effect into it. And um, I think it, it is more, it is definitely challenging to, to go to a different club and to get uh, comfortable in the uncomfortable again and to work out new things and from unfamiliar faces and different networks, the way that the club, the new club worked to the, to the old club. And, um, there is definitely, it plays a massive role in, in the character building, I think. I think um, I, I wouldn't take anything back, to be honest. I think I, I learned so much about myself as a person um, to go through those challenging times, to step out of the comfort zones and, and go into the uncomfort. Um, I learned so much about myself and what I can um, t- take head on and, and challenge myself and overcome. Um, so, but to answer your question, yeah, it is, mate. It is a tough, tough gig to, to leave your comfort zone and and go on and, and challenge yourself in, in different areas. But um, if you, mate, some are lucky enough to spend the whole careers at one joint and it's, yeah. um, it, that would be something special. But um, I, I do, what I said, I don't regret anything I've done by just stepping out of those and testing un, unknown waters because I think I wouldn't have been able to grow as a person if I didn't do so. Speaking of uncomfortable zones, uh, you first, well, you're back into a NRL um, pre-season after being here at the Leeds Rhinos. How hard was that at your age, and um, and how's the how's the body holding up? Yeah, hey, mate, it's a that's a good question because I did question yourself every day. To be honest, I think um, when I was, I'm not, I don't, I haven't really answered this question too. I think it was all. Um, it's all been kept inside me, but and I'm happy that you, you asked it because it's a it's a good question. Um, when I was going through that time with um, me and my partner in in England, um, I, it was a question I kept asking myself every day. Like, I know I have to do this for my family, which is which was the easy the easy answer was to go back, but the hardest answer was, am I am I up for it? Can I can I do it? Can I get back into that arena and and um, still play uh, first grade footy and and keep up that level, especially um, being out of the game for a year? Um, so that was a, a very hard question. I had to keep um, yeah justifying to myself every day. I think, uh, but um, I don't know. I think it's just something that's ingrained in me since a young kid that I always um, I never give up. I just want to keep pushing harder and harder and. Um, I think, like we just said, um, being able to step out of those comfort zones and, and work through those challenges and come through the other end really helps with those decisions too because it's it's already a platform. You've already set yourself up in that that mind frame that you can take challenges head on and overcome them. So um, that was the biggest that was the biggest question I kept asking myself: Could I get back into the NRL? 
And then if I do, how am I going to handle the preseason because it is ruthless and like, the, the science behind it all now, the, the young talent that's coming through, um, they're biting and well, not really biting at your ankles now. They're, they're probably eye level with you with um, uh, getting that, that jersey. So it's um, it was ta- challenging, but I know it's the old school sort of training. I think um, you just got to bite down on the mouth guard, grit your teeth and, and rip in and put your best foot forward and see how much left you got in the tank because <laughs> – yeah, thirty-one-year-old Trent Merrin isn't the same as the nineteen-year-old that put on that red V. So, um, yeah, it's it's definitely challenging, definitely harder. But yeah, I'm I'm grateful that I uh, I took that approach and I, I took it head on because I'm happy where I'm at now and the family's happy and um, yeah, I'm content that we made the right decision. Would it be fair to say that uh, the thirty-one-year-old Trent Merrin's got a better rig now than the nineteen-year-old? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's sad to say, but I think so now. <laughs> um, I've had the uh, ups and downs throughout my career. <laughs> yeah, that's but funny, um, man. Yeah, I, think I, I'm I say in probably I, the best shape. I follow you on um, obviously. I follow the journey a bit on because it was interesting for me because obviously coming over here, you always question yourself whether you could get back there or would like to get back there, and uh, so I followed you know what you're doing on socials and that. And you seem to have got got ripped up, mate. You've lost a bit of weight. Is that something that you and um, your coaching staff have had a conversation about or was that just something that you personally wanted to challenge yourself on? Yeah, I think um, a lot of it come down to me mental health too, mate. I think I, I just um, thought, I think you, you tell yourself a few lies um, when you're doing it tough. I think uh, when I was over there, I thought that everything was okay. I was, I was doing all right, but I was about... 10 kilos um, away from my, my best shape and, and the best style of footy I could have been in. So when I come back here, I knew that I had a big job ahead of me. Um, but I think being, like, like we said, it was you, it's always great to challenge yourself in uncomfortable situations, but it is outstanding to be back in a comfortable situation. So to be yeah. back in my comfort zone, be back home, uh, mentally free, being in common ground, um, being able to make my, my health and my well-being number one, um, put things in place to, to reach certain goals. Um, yeah, it definitely helped me a lot to, to get in the shape that I'm in now. And then obviously having um, a professional level at the Dragons um, rip into me, uh, get me into the physical shape that they need me to be in. And um, I've always been a professional in that way, but to have um, the support like that around me was definitely helped me in getting myself in, in the best position I, I can be. Plenty of plenty of sauna sessions. That seems to be a new thing now, eh? Yeah, I actually invested in my mate. Now I got I got one. Got one, got one the home, so I got one in the garage, mate. To uh... <laughs> is that a tip for me? Get one. Get a sauna. You'll be all right. Oh, yeah. A few more mate. years of me. <laughs> no, nah. so, mate. Oh, yeah. I'm enjoying. I've done a bit of homework when I was in England because it was absolutely freezing. So. I invested in mine when I was filming freezing in England. I come here and it's 40 odd degrees, so might as well just sit outside. Right, talk to me about cryptocurrency. Ah, yes. Your favorite thing to talk about ever. I was only just going for a run the other day and I thought to myself, for the first time since I've heard you talk about cryptocurrency a million times, Mez might be onto something (laughs) because I was going for a run and. at the end of the run, I had to go do the groceries and you're not allowed to touch anything anymore. So cash Mate. became irrelevant right now because you're not allowed to use it because no one wants to touch it because it'll spread virus. It's so, been coming. It's been a long time coming, mate. <laughs> I know. It killed, me to, it killed me to admit, but I feel like yeah. this might be a turn in your investments in the Christmas cri- cryptocurrency. And you might make yeah. the dog a little bit more happier around training because he he has invested heavily as well because of you. Yeah. You've been in his ear. Well, he opened his mind and listened, mate. Yeah. I wish you did. Are you guys having the last laugh now, you reckon? No, not yet, mate. Not yet. I think it's still got a little bit of growth to go. But yeah. um, like we said at the, the start of the video, that um, especially going through these times, you've got to open your mind and look at different avenues. And, um, yeah, I was, I was lucky enough to – meet uh, a very special person, uh, someone that, one of my best mates that really steered me in opening my mind up and lead me into the cryptocurrency direction. Um, not just as an investment um, 
not just the investment side of things, but just opening my mind up in financial um, situations itself. And um, I did a lot of homework before I invested in it. Um, and when you really do your diligence, again, I'll use that word, uh, to right. look they, into... You like that word now at the minute? Don't I like that word. It's, Is that your word it's of the day? <laughs> diligence. So when you when you do your diligence and you, you do your homework <laughs> and you look into you look into it, um, it makes so much sense, mate. It's um it is it's mind boggling the um the way that it's been created to um, help our financial system. Not not just the financial system, but people in itself. I think to get away from uh, the government system, uh, the way that we're run in the world. I think um, it gives the people. Um, a chance to own their own currency and to be in charge of themselves instead of the banks being in charge of us. So, um, yeah, I think it is the way of the future. I think uh, you're seeing a lot of people holding Bitcoin wallets and, and uh, cryptocurrency wallets uh, down the track. So um, I think after this, mate, get on YouTube and, and do some homework. There's a tip from Trent Merrin. Bitcoin. 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 Any, any, any maybe... Um, cryptocurrencies are flying under the radar that you can give viewers a tip about. <laughs> Maybe it's something not as expensive as Bitcoin. Oh, mate, there's, there's so many Don't pretend like you them. don't talk about it all the time. Mate, Come on. No, there's so many of them. Mate, I could sit on here for hours and talk to you about it, but I'm just trying to break let's it right move, down. Let's move on then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't want people to Just Bitcoin, asleep. that'll do. Bitcoin, just just look into it. Don't invest yet. Do your own homework. Look into it and yeah, yeah make up your own strategy. Mate, the NRL, um, what news have you guys been receiving back? Uh, I know the Rugby League Players Association have been working hard. I, I speak to Clint Newton quite a bit, um, the CEO of the Rugby League Players Association. Uh, what sort of news have you got back and what, what's to be expected in the near future for the competition and and the salaries and etc. Do you have any information on that? Yeah, Cuff, it's a, it's a weird one. Um, it changes every day. I think um, the RLPA touch base with us probably uh, every three days about what, what situation we're in. It's it's definitely not going to be good, um, yeah. no matter what way it goes. I think it's the same in the Super League where we're all looking at the cuts and how we all go about it. But um, I think they're getting into the nitty gritty now of the NRL about um, what the number is going to be. Mm. That's that's why it's a hard one to answer right now because first of all, it was 50% then 78%, now it's 42%. Um, but I think, yeah, you got you got the right people and got Nudo in, in place to, to nut those things out. Um, there, there's a strong unit there with the RLPA now, so we're blessed to have that in place. But um, yeah, like I said, mate, the game's probably never going to be the same from, from what we're going through now. I think... Uh, um, they're talking about starting the, the season in September now. So, um, yeah, probably have a mini pre-season uh, in the next few months and uh, probably even shortening the season to 15 games. So it's, it's made that everything's talking up in about the air September, at the moment. September, a September start. September start, oh, yep. man. yeah. Yeah, so it's, mate, it's totally unknown waters to what we're used to. So, yeah, it's... Um, yeah, it's the, like I said, the game's not going to be the same that it's always been. We've been hopeful of a June, July start, potentially. Potentially, well, mate. Yeah. To be honest, they'll, they'll start them as soon as they possibly can. But worst case scenario, September is probably the furthest that it can go. Yeah. But um, yeah. Like, like I just said, that if they can start it next week, we we, we would as a collective group because um, yeah, we're all taking a financial hit at the moment. Because we're because. Say what you really want to say, because we're not getting any younger. Hundred <laughs> percent. Just start the comp. Start the well, I don't know. Own terms, for God's sake. Oh, jeez, mate. It's um, but you know what, mate? Again, trying to find a positive in it all. I think it, it's really um, woken a lot of people up, especially us as players, into um, being very grateful for what we do have, and um, sure. even even to think of. Um, things post footy too mate i think we take it a lot for granted you think it's going to last forever and um you know put things too many things in place for your career after footy and when something like this hits you i think it's got to ring alarm bells to wake yourself up and, and put things in place for your career after footy i will say any of the lads that are out there watching this um potentially um 
whether you're into if you if you're a professional athlete right now um, that's going through this with us or you just um, come out of high school or whatever I think it is a really good time for um, to get self educated I mean I'm at uni at the minute um, however uni's been postponed we're sort of doing some online stuff but um, because you can't actually physically come into class um, they've had to postpone our classes back until the end of the year but I think what a great opportunity if if we are stuck in the house for a month two months three months whatever uh, in this lockdown what a great opportunity to go and get um, <clears throat> online and start up get some education under your belt just because there's so many um, different programs and courses out there that you can be partaking in right now from the comforts of your own home. Most definitely. I think um, if I could wind back the clock and you'd have to go back a, a very long time now. <laughs> um, when I when I first started, mate, I wish I did I did that exactly what you just said. I wish I did some homework. I, I did get a few courses under me belt, but um, I would have probably paid more attention to get a, a degree or um, a t a tape course under me belt something that i can really um just jump into once i finish so it is a strong message and what i said um a lot of players can really take a lot out of this if they look at it the right way not only um not only not only a career i think when we're going through something like this can i use the word again i'm going to use the word again do it do you do your diligence and work work out how the financial system works and put things in place so that um, if something like this ever happens again, or even moving forward that you're not in a real tough position, that um, you, you know about your taxes, you know about budgeting, you know about what's coming in, what's going out. Um, you, you, you're doing your homework so that when these, or if these things ever have to pop up again, you're in a better position so you're not putting so much stress on your mental health or, or your financial health. Mate, it's crazy you bring that up because I think we've spoken about before how how important it is to know all these sort of things and you don't learn about them at high school, do you? You sort of, especially as a, as a person that comes through um, the grades in high school and then straight into the um, professional athletes sort of scene when you're playing um, for, in the NRL straight out of high school, you don't learn about mortgages or savings or, you know, offset accounts and taxes and all this, that and the other. So, mate, I think it is, it, it's crazy that we're not, well, I don't know exactly what they're learning in high school these days. That'd be a bit creepy if I was sneaking around high schools trying to figure out what they're doing there. But um, it's just crazy that we don't. So if you can take it in your own hands to do it in this in this time of um, uncertainty, it'd be, it'd be brilliant step forward for the individual, I think. Um, needs to happen, mate. Needs to happen. Definitely. With um, with we touched on the uh, the RLPA just a, a minute ago. How important has that been for you guys in the NRL? Yeah, no, I really don't think we'd be in the position that we're in right now if um if we didn't have them. I think we just um caught what they they ask us to do. I think we'd just be in the cattle system, mate. Just do what we're told and and get on with it. So. We're, we're so blessed to be able to have a strong RLPA that they've been building for the last few years now to to really voice our opinions and, and stand up for us in and, and such a really tough time because if we didn't have a mate, I think things could be a lot worse than what they are. So, um, yeah, we're, we're really blessed um, as rugby league players to have uh, the RLPA in the position that, that, that we're in now to, to stand up for us and, and put our voice first. Brilliant. On to something not so serious now, um, or you can make it as serious as you want, I suppose. Uh, I've got a question that I've been asking everyone, and you're not exactly in lockdown yet um, in Australia, but we've been in lockdown for, I think it's day nine now. Day nine. So what's that mean for you? So you just can't leave the house unless you're going <laughs> for groceries? So the rules are, unless you need to work, so you have to work, like say mm -hmm. people that are, supporting you know nhs workers or grocers that might be supplying like in the food chain sort of industry where they're supplying for the rest of us that are all stuck at home unfortunately um unless you're in that sort of industry you can't leave home you got an hour a day where you can get some exercise but you've got to do it on your own or um with yeah whoever you live with um and basically just imagine fighting those demons. Imagine fighting those demons in your head, trainer boy yourself. Oh, I've fought a few. Don't worry about that. 
I've been on a couple. Of, I've been on a couple of road runs now, and they've been horrendous. Uh, like, the body just that's crazy, mate. Complete that shock. Crazy. I've sort of been getting it right. I've been doing day on day off. So yeah. So did you say you could get locked up if you're caught outside of those those laws? They've enforced a that's rule insane. where you get. I think it's a fine, and then if you're caught um, the second time, you can potentially be locked up. Yeah. I don't know how that'd work, but anyway. It's um yeah. yeah well you know what you you've lived here for a year, uh you know what it's like there's a there's a huge police presence in Australia on the streets but here yeah. there wasn't like up until no, the definitely not you wouldn't see you'd see a couple of bobbies walking around the streets and you you might come across the the occasional like traffic police but nothing compared to Oz and at the moment everywhere you go you just they're just out enforce and because there's make, fines in place mate and they can make money that's the why they're out and about the government, all this the system the benefits are coming from us where they're getting finding us taking it out of our back pocket and giving it back to us yeah it's weird yeah there you go don't even know what they're doing no it's crazy so yep. the 21 day lockdown if it's enforced in australia tomorrow and you have to spend the 21 day lockdown Indoors, well, within your facility, facility for, within your house facility. and your yeah, <laughs> facilities, uh, yeah. and you couldn't pick your family or your pets. Who would you choose? Three people. Who would you choose to go in this lockdown with, and why? Jeez, and it can't be partner and, and kid. It's going to be outside of that. Sorry, good question. Oh, we just had a new baby. Sorry, can't spend twenty-one days with you. Got to. Cuffy's asked me to choose three other people. Who would you pick? Oh, jeez. This is a tough one. Um, Jakey Makedo, definitely. I Jake. think we'd have a... a we'd Your best have, mate. Definitely have a, Your best mate. We'd definitely have a, team, a good laugh. We'd have a, we'd have a great laugh. Um, definitely wouldn't have a dog in there with me. <laughs> he would absolutely do my head in if dog was there with me. So I definitely wouldn't go that way. Um, well, yeah, mate, this is a tough one. Um, probably Jordan Peterson. I'll get Jordan Peterson in there with me. He's, do you know who Jordan Peterson is? You definitely, no, you don't. Podcaster, um, open mind. He's got a very open mind. Just YouTube him when you, when you get a spare minute. He's, um, Philosophy. his views on the world. Yeah, he's a philosopher. You can say that he's a philosopher. His, his views on the world are um, next level. He's, he's pretty sp- spot on with um, how he goes about life and um, what he puts in place. So, Jordan Peterson would would be one of the people I'd um, spend with. Um, geez, um, probably Joe Rogan. I'll get Joe Rogan on there. Joe Rogan would be interesting. He'd have some good. He'd have some yeah. good chats, wouldn't he? He would, mate. He's <laughs> he's talked to the best of the best so I'll get him on there and um, probably I'll get my stepdad uh, not my stepdad sorry my um, father-in-law he'd, he'd probably be a, a bike I'd get in there too we have some pretty open wine conversations he's um, really helped me out with a lot of things and taught me a lot of things that um, I needed to know so um, yeah it, we'll put Jake is that three did I name three just now no, you've named you've named four four I'm named four. <laughs> you get out the cut one. Yeah, scratch sorry. Jake. Or we'll scratch Jake. Jake, you <laughs> Jake. He's not. He's not educating me. <laughs> he's just good for banter. So yeah. well, um, you need you need yeah, humor no, in the house, don't you? You do, mate. But I think I've got enough of myself. I keep myself humid, so um, I can't keep myself out, can I? <laughs> potentially, potentially. Yeah. So those three, four. All right. Got some questions for you. You only have to say one or the other. Or neither. What would you prefer, cores or a super dry? Cores lager. Do you remember what it tastes like? Hundred percent. Super dry. Super dry for sure, mate. Costa coffee or Campos coffee? (laughs) (laughs) Next question. Campos, one thousand percent. Too easy. Yeah. Steak pies or pork pies? Did you have a pork pie when you're here? I did have a pork pie. I didn't mind them actually, but if they were heated up, they'd be a lot better. They had um, a cold pork pie. Yeah, I who thought offered, they always come cold. Who offered you a cold pork? I don't think they do. I think that. Oh, Steve McDonald offered me a cold pork pie. 
<laughs> I'll hit him up now because they're supposed to be hot. Bastard. Uh, <laughs> hot chocolate or Bovril? What's that? Never had one over oh, there. Right. No. It's a, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an English thing. So it's just basically a cup of gravy, but it's like a drink that they... Cup of gravy and shrimp marin don't go together. It's not really like... <laughs> It's not really gravy. That's just the way. I, that's a watery gravy. It's any way I can explain it to you. Hot uh, chalky. Hot chalky, mate. Hot chalky. Scratch that. Sliders or thongs? Thongs, mate. Come thongs. on. Thongs. I hate sliders. <laughs> Jess has bought me two pairs of them, and they're just spiderweb grabbers. I don't touch them. Thongs. They, they make my feet actually, look really weird. They transform actually, my feet. Scratch them all and Birkenstocks. Oh my I'm a Birkenstock man, mate. Burkers. Burkers every day of the week. Comfiest sliders, thongs. Who's who? Jandals ja- you can ever wear. <laughs> yeah, it's like a it's like a combo. It's like someone just went, hmm, how can we put this all together and make it look really uh, okay. I'm... Religious. Make it look really religious. <laughs> the Jesus sandals, basically, aren't they? They are, and they're the best ever. So are they in at the moment or something because i don't definitely they're definitely you know they're they're in here in the coastal areas it's a it's a coastal thing all right so notes for when i return home one day they'll probably be out at home and you'll be like what the hell are you wearing them for cuff no they'll never go out of fashion mate they're outstanding uh the Yorkshire coastline or the south (laughs) coast sunday roast no mate or Sunday barbecue. Oh, now this is where you get me. Um, yeah, Sunday roasts are class, aren't they? Like, no, they are, mate. Yeah, no, they they're outstanding. They're definitely one of the main things I miss there too. So, but a Sunday barbie, is mate, a nice cold beer. Um, I don't know. Uh, I can't really divide that because um, I really enjoy them both a lot. So. Just depends on the weather. If it's winter, I'll go a Sunday roast, 100 percent. But if we got a nice hot day out here, I'll be hitting the barbie up. I suppose that, that's something I've asked this question before, and I always get a similar answer. I think I've got to put it um, in different scenarios. So, what would you mm-hmm. rather in winter? What would you rather in summer? Because you're not going to sit out at the barbecue in the winter, are you? No, no. But I do enjoy them both. This one's get. This next question is probably going to be most difficult. Wollongong, Wollongong Wolves FC or Leeds United? Oh, United, mate, for sure. Leeds United, 100%. You became a That's proper fan of Leeds United, didn't you? Big time, mate. Yeah, loved it. Absolutely loved it. You even knew the Best song time. and everything? I was going mad there, mate. It's, that's a memory that I will never forget. Um, just going to one, a few of their games and just the atmosphere. It was... Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely my team now moving forward. Brilliant. I don't even think Wollongong Wolves are in the comp anymore, are they? <laughs> I don't know. I Googled them this morning, to be honest. They look pretty impressive, to be fair. I thought they might yeah, have been nah, a, you... a proper a proper professional outfit, but maybe nah, not. No, United, mate. United. 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 Yeah, the boys, the boys missed your chant and that around the um, sheds, that's for sure. Oh, uh, mate, good times. <laughs> www.trentmarin.com.au. Uh, AU. Tell us about it mm-hmm. and why have you set that up? Yeah, I set that up when I was at Penrith. I think um, I started to open my mind a lot um, when I was there. I think I had a lot of time on my hands and um, really to break away from just the stigma of just rugby league in itself and um, looking into networking and getting into a bigger, I think I just wanted to um, reach out to a lot, a lot more people and I thought that was the, it is probably the best way about going about it. Um, you can interact with the fans a lot more. You can start your own little business and, and intertwine it with, with your website. And I think that's just the way that, I think as, as footballers, you don't really look at that um, avenue too much. So I thought, um, why not brand myself? And um, I've learned a lot over my career and um, there's a lot I can give back to people. And I, I set trentmarin.com up just so I can uh, yeah, give back to the people and um, 
uh, even now I'm putting th a few things together that I can launch on the website and um, put some programs together that uh, people can interact with. And um, like we touched on before too, like finances and um, players that are going to come into the game that are unknown unknown waters and they need um, some some help in that area. Uh, I've been through it all. Um, and when I can put them put these projects together it's it's um it's a platform i can leak it out to to those fans and and for the next generation coming through um you you do interact with uh people quite often and you've been and you've been doing it quite uh often more more recently on your your instagram page i noticed the other day you've got a little um competition set up best dad jokes how's that been going yeah, mate. you're yeah, like I, um... king of dad jokes You've always got a dad joke. What's your dad joke? Oh, uh, this was before mate, the I, dad. It is. It's. I don't know, man. It's. Uh, it's probably just my character and what I'm about. I just like having, bringing joy and having fun. I don't like taking things too serious. Um, so, I. Uh, I was cleaning. We got a lot of time in our hands now with isolation. So I was cleaning out the garage and I come come across a shitload of uh, old gear and jerseys and, um, or old stuff in bags for me and I don't you know what like we're all going for a tough time how can I bring some joy into some people's lives and we can have a bit of fun with it so I started my first one off and I've got a personal sponsor with Toyota over here and they had to guess the car and the person who guessed the car won um, a jersey and that and uh, the next one was my dad joke I kicked that off today so the best dad joke um, I win uh, a bit of gear so I'm going to do something like that every second day just interact with the the fans and the people especially going for a bit of hard times um just to take their mind away from it for a little bit and have a bit of a laugh have some fun um who knows what i'll come up with next mate probably a fancy dress challenge so <laughs> uh, <laughs> you'll go good with that one all right and all right you'd take the cake on that so I'm yeah mate, just a bit of fun get the fans amongst it and um give back what's your uh what's your best worst dad joke that you've received so far or that you may have up your sleeve Mate, there's been a great one. Um, oh, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll probably stuff it up, but he goes, um, yeah, knock, knock. Who's there? Adolf. Adolf who? Adolf boy hit me in the mouth. That's why I'm talking this way. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. All right. Oh, mate. All right, and that's me winner at the moment, so... See, that's what that's what you get out of it too. You get some uh, you get some material. So, bit of laugh, bit of a laugh. It's going good so far. I've got a, I've got a couple up my sleeve that I, I, you know what I'm like you. If someone asks me to come up with one, you, even though you might have a ton up your sleeve, as soon as you get asked, you like your mind just goes blank, don't you? So I've written a few down. No, I've got one I go to all the time. There's always one. Go on. I think I've heard it's it. Me. Go. Yeah. You go first. I've got two actually. I've got two. What do you, you've, I've already put that one up. So what do you call a girl for knees caught in the fence? Don't know. Courtney? Courtney. <laughs> and what do you call a donkey with three legs? A wonky. I've heard you a say wonky. that one before. Yeah. <laughs> Let me go to, mate. Did you hear about the kid kidnapping at school? <laughs> no. It's okay, he's woken up. <laughs> Kidnapping, you're an idiot. I like that. <laughs> what do you call someone with no body or no nose? Nobody knows. Ah, shit. <laughs> Got me. I like it though. Good material. What is the least spoken language in the world? What? Sign language. <laughs> <laughs> See, mate, there's some there's some good ones out there. All right, I'll finish on this one. All What's right. ET short for? What? He's just got little legs. <laughs> oh, jeez. That was I think that was my favourite because it's sort of cute, but yeah. Yeah. Nah, keep that one in your back pocket, mate. <laughs> right, mate. To wrap it up, I've just been asking everyone that's joined um, the lockdown if they could potentially just send out a message um, during these uncertain times. Right now, right here in the UK, we've got the 21-day lockdown um, and the Stay Home campaign. So I'd just like to get a message um, from yourself in 
um, to the people that may or may not be watching this? Yeah, mate. Um, my message would be, firstly, I uh, hope everyone stays safe and uh, applies to the rules that um, the governments are putting in place to keep our, all our safety at hand. So I hope everyone's staying safe and well there. That's my first message to everyone. And um, my second, well, yeah, my second, you only want me to do one, but I'll, I'll give you a second message. Um, I think I, I touched on it throughout the, the interview is um, I think in a tough time like this and um, we're all going through it, no one's missing out on it. It's um, definitely a tough time for our generation. I think the best we can possibly do is look at positives out of it all. I think um, we, we all get to spend a lot more time with our family um, that we, we wouldn't get the chance to do so. I'm grateful that um, I've just had a little little boy now. I get to spend a lot more time with him at home and watch him grow which I wouldn't have, I would have been at work um, all, all day and then come home. So um, just find the positives in it all and, and, and be grateful for our health. I think um, that's our main thing above our finances that we're all, we're all taking a bit of a hit now. I think our health is our main priority. I think without our health, we wouldn't be able to um, go to work and, and do anything like that. So um, just to stay healthy, uh, mentally healthy too. I think um, test ourselves, do things that you probably wouldn't never get the chance to do. I made sushi rolls for the first time the other day and it was a, a great challenge and now I've got that tool in my back pocket. So just take this um, opportunity to do things that you never get the chance to do and um, open your mind and uh, put some more tools in, in the kit so that um, when this virus does go away and we, we combat it, that um, you come out of it a better person and, and a bit more knowledge than what you, you come into it with. There you have it. Thank you very much, Trent Merrin, for joining joining the lockdown. I appreciate it and I uh, wish you all the best over the upcoming weeks and I uh, hope you continue to enjoy your time with your family um, whilst you get this opportunity. Cheers, mate. And hope, hopefully we don't go into lockdown. That'd no, be well, good. <laughs> stay, stay isolated as is and you, you should be sweet. Thanks, Kapo. Thanks for having me, mate. Been a pleasure. Thanks for joining me, mate. Have a good one. United. United. You're not it.